morning. Welcome again to Trinity Lutheran Church here in Greencastle. My name is David Wolf, and I'm the assistant minister, one of the assistant ministers for Trinity, and we are joyed to have each of you worship with us, either here in person today or online. Um, we're joyed to have you all with us this fifth Sunday after Epiphany, and today we remember that God calls everyone. No matter how unworthy we may think we are to serve him, everyone is important to God. So we continue to gather in person and online. As we continue to battle against the recent COVID outbreak, the church council and the medical advisory team strongly encourages everyone to wear masks uh, during inpatient or in during in um, person worship to protect our faith family. If you feel ill, though, please stay home and worship online. The bulletin is on the website tlcgreencastle.org. Just click news and events, then bulletins. If you're in the sanctuary, please use the forms to share any God moments that you may have experienced over the past week. And if you're joining us on Facebook, please use the comments to say hello, tell us about your God moments, or write down something that maybe inspired you from worship today. And as always, please be sure to share the piece in the comment section. Those in the sanctuary have received prepackaged communion kits, and those of you joining us online, please find a slice of bread and a cup of juice or wine for communion. If that is impossible, know that your desire to, for union with Jesus is Holy Communion. So again, it is a blessing to have all of you here. A couple quick announcements for today. Uh, first off, we are collecting, I think it's dry noodles for the food pantry today. So if you brought anything this week or have dry noodles sitting around the house, please bring them in for the food pantry and we'll make sure that gets to its proper location. Uh, we want to welcome Pastor Denise Horn. She will be serving as our interim pastor. Um, so it is a pleasure to have you with us, Pastor. Um, and she'll be with us as we go through this time of transition. So she'll be in the back uh, after at the end of the service, so please be sure to stop by, say hello, introduce yourself um, uh, when you're going out the door today. Uh, two people just to remember in your prayers today, uh, Karen and Dale Thatcher, they um, came down with uh, some COVID illness symptoms this week, and Karen actually had to go into the hospital. She's home now, is my understanding, so um, God willing, she... She's doing well, um, and Dale, I think, is, is slowly on the mend as well. But if you can keep them in your prayers and all who may be suffering from the COVID outbreak or any other illnesses that you can think of. Now let's put all our cares and concerns at the foot of the cross as we prepare for worship. Absolutely 
If you're able, please stand for the for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We turned our face away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before your angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in this world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> the first lesson is from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. 
seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say this to the people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively together Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your perfect dwelling. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second lesson is found in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. If you're able, please stand. The Gospel of the Lord according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon, a Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but I have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you may have heard it said that God makes the impossible possible. And I think to myself recently, I witnessed this. When I had taken my daughter uh, one day la the other week to soccer practice, and it was an indoor soccer practice, and she went on her way to do her thing. And s while I was there, I started to watch this other practice, and it was two teams, a team of boys and a team of girls, who were scrimmaging against each other. And it seemed fairly normal. Uh, they seemed about the same size, same age, except for one girl. This girl was probably lucky if she was five foot, and she was lucky if she weighed 70 pounds sopping wet. And yet, this girl was amazing. She was able to pass, shoot, and dribble that ball spot on. She was the underdog. She was the one individual you would never expect to be this much of a challenge. And yet, she connected every pass with precision. She dribbled the ball with accuracy, and grace and was extremely fast. So yes, God does make the impossible possible, but I think also God, it's important us to remember that God uses the most unlikely people in the most unlikely circumstances. Now, a lot of times when we hear the stories of God doing the impossible, it does sound like a fish tale. It sounds like things you'd say, well, I can't really believe that that happened. But uh, the one individual, or I'm sorry, but um, the one thing is that though it sounds like a fishtail, it is true that God uses us in whatever manner that he sees fit to get his message across. And we hear that especially today in our gospel. 
where God uses ordinary people. He doesn't go after the elite. He doesn't summon up a priest or a prophet to do his work. It's not a king, nobody with money. But instead, he uses hardworking people. And these people he uses, they're like you and I. They're middle-class folk who go out, do their work, and try to make it from day to day. But these are the people that God calls. So as we're cast on into the scene, Jesus is preaching to his people, and they're hanging on to every word that he's saying with intent. So much that they're intrigued by Jesus that they're literally pushing him back into the lake. And he's on the edge of the water, ready to get wet into this lake, Genesaret. And by the way, this is a really popular fishing hole. So there is a lot of people around and a lot of boats. Now, before we go on about this, let's talk about fishing a little bit because I think that's important. So there's three facts you need to know about fishing in Jesus' time. Number one, there was two ways to fish. They didn't have fishing poles back then. So you had your choice of having a circular net that was weighted and had a rope around the end, and you would toss that either off from the shoreline or on out on the side of your boat, and you would catch shallow fish. But if you were going into deep waters, you needed a larger net. And these larger nets were strung between two boats. And they were also weighted, and they were dropped down to catch larger loads of deep water fish. So this would be similar to what we consider trawling for fish today. This type of fishing was very popular for commercial fishermen, for people that were using this as a business. This is where you want to get your, to earn your living. Secondly, fishermen's work was nothing to write home about. It was not easy work. Fishing was typically done from sunset to sunrise. And that was when the fish, because that's when the fish were moving. And fishermen would fish the entire night. And at dawn, they would bring their catch back, and they would prepare the fish for sale. Once that was completed then, they would do any repairs to the boat, to the sails, as well as clean their nets and repair any tears in the nets. And usually they had this all done by noontime or early midday so that they could rest. And then you rested till the sun set again, and then you went through and did the job over. And this happened six days a week. Finally, fishing was considerable, considered an honorable profession, but it wasn't a high-class society profession. This was people who were in the lower crust that did this. They were hardworking. They usually were minimally educated people. But fishing was also could be very lucrative, and it could be very competitive. So it wouldn't have been uncommon to see, in Jesus' time, Lake Genesis littered with boats that were moored to the, to the shoreline. So it's fair to say that the early bird did get the worm because whoever was first out caught the fish. Now, as Jesus, let's go back to our story, as Jesus continues to talk to the people, all these boats, if you can imagine, lined, and who's, who's, whose boat does he pick? It's Simon Peter's. And he asked him to row out slightly from the shore so that he could safely share his message with the people without getting pushed into the sea. And Peter, though he's tired, he listens because he realizes that Jesus is someone who, is, who has authority. And he assumes that he's a prophet sent by God. Now, as the people disperse, though, it's getting later. And the fishermen are just finishing their work to prepare for that evening. Simon, by this time, and his, and his friends, uh, James and John, they're tired, they're hungry, and they're ready to relax. But Jesus kicks it up a notch, doesn't he? He says, no, it's not time to relax. Let's set sail and go into deep waters. So before, G before Simon was maybe a little bit annoyed, now Simon's 
pretty angry because he's going, look, you know, we didn't catch a single fish the night before. We're tired. We need to rest. And now you want us to row our boats out into deeper waters. This is treacherous fishing grounds. But even though he's annoyed, even though he's angry, Peter listens. Simon listens. And they take their, they go out into the deep waters. They cast their nets. And to their disbelief, they catch one of the biggest hauls they've ever had to the point that the boats begin to sink. Now, how often do we hear of stories where Jesus makes the impossible possible? This is just one of many. And Jesus, with this miracle of the multitude of fish, it may sound like a true fish tale. And if we just focus on that point that he catches these fish, this multitude of fish, we're missing the message. I think it's important to remember that God is always with us in our times of plenty and in our times of want. The boat's sinking because of all these fish, and yet Jesus doesn't walk off, but he remains with Simon and his friends. God never leaves us. More importantly, we never know who or when someone might be called to use, be used for God's work. Doing God's work isn't without some fears and reservations, going into deep water. Folks, there's, remember, there's monsters and dangers in them waters, so we don't want to go into deep waters, do we? But isn't that what God calls us to do? Aren't we called to get in the boat, to face our demons, and go into the wilderness ready to do whatever God places before us? As part of Christ's mission, we are called to share our God moments with others. We are called to lift those around us low in spirits and, pr and pray for them. And I think it pays for us to remember that God does love everyone and uses everyone as he sees fit to help spread his message of love, mercy, and forgiveness. Rather, it's the CEO of the high-tech company or the beggar on the street corner. We are all fair game. So when it comes to Jesus using us as a tool to spread the words of love, hope, and faith, you better look out because he may just pick you. One other point I think to remember is that God doesn't expect us to be anything more than human. We're created in his likeness, accepting of Christ in one minute, turning away from him in the next. And just as Simon realizes that Christ is more than just a prophet and now is begging him for forgiveness and saying, look, I'm a sinner, you know, get away from me because you don't want to use me. And just as Paul said the same, who he was a persecutor, and now he's begged for Christ for forgiveness and becomes a devout follower. We, too, are not forgotten, but we are forgiven. Jesus never gives up on us. If he did, we wouldn't have the cross, we wouldn't have the resurrection, and we most certainly would not be here having this conversation and lifting one another up in our times of need. Jesus loves us for who we are and wants nothing more than for us to follow him. Everyone, again, is important to God. This past Wednesday, we celebrated Groundhog, Groundhog's Day. But it also is, a report, is an important time in the, in the ancient church and even in the church today. We celebrate in the church a festival called Candlemas. And it's celebrated on February the 2nd, and it's a festival day and a day of, of light. Uh, and it's a day of the church when we celebrate the light of Christ that has been given to us and leads us in our lives. Traditionally, candles that were used in the church for the upcoming year and in our homes were blessed. And if you had any Christmas greens left over, they were burnt. It was a festival day to countermark against the pagan hot tradition of imbolc. Imbolc is a Celtic word, and it means literally in the belly or to be extremely pregnant. It was a time of cleansing and a time to put the winter behind us and prepare for spring. Today, we're going to bless the candles that we will be using throughout this year. We, too are in the belly, ready to burst out. We are ready to start down new beginnings here at Trinity.
but it does require for us to be cleansed. It does require us to put the old behind us, and it does require us to start anew. Jesus tells Simon, Peter, and James, and John that today you come and follow me, and I'm going to make you fisher of men. And when I hear these words, all I can think that Christ is really saying to me is, look, man, get in the boat. That's what you need to do is get in the boat. And it doesn't mean that the ride might not be a little rough along the way, and there will always be a lot of fish tales, story swapping, and sharing of God moments. Most importantly, though, there's going to be a lot of God's love to share among each other and with strangers. So guess what? It's time to haul anchor, to drop the nets, Let's set sail because there is fishing to be done and there is always room for one more in the boat. Amen. So at our best, Trinity is passionate about God, and we respond to God's love, becoming still, closing our eyes, and opening our heart spaces to God's presence. Let's take just a minute to put our cares again at the foot of the cross and to get ready for the journey. the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sea, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? the Lord of wind and flame. I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. 
If you're able, please stand and let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with the waiting world. God of grace, hear our peace. So often, soften the hearts of rulers and government that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse towards violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in the service of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain, especially Minerva, Carolyn, Ray and Ginger, Gladys, Mimi and Gus, and Jake, and those that we raise up to you from our hearts and aloud. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnership with community organizations and ministries, especially the Greencastle Food Bank, Rachel's Closet, and the Greencastle Ministerium. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace. We give thanks for all who worship with us this day, those gathered with us here in person, those who gather with us online at home, and those who gather together with us in the spirit wherever they may be. Help all people to feel your presence with them and to know that they belong. This is Christ's church, and there is a place for all people here. God of grace. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace. Since we have such grace, hopes in your promise, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we mentioned in the sermon today, on the feast of the presentation of our Lord, also known as Candlemas, which is celebrated on February 2nd, we dedicate these candles to be used in worship during the following year. And may God's light fill all our lives as we go into the world to spread his message of love. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, and to praise you with lives of love, joy, or justice, and joy. Accept these candles which we offer in thanksgiving, and may they be used as a sign of Christ, the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Bring us all at length to your perfect, perfect kingdom, where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. peace of Christ be with you all. 
If you're joining us on Facebook, please share Christ's peace with one another in the comments section, and please share some form of peace with one another in a safe fashion. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your loves to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you, and enough for all. body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. If you're able, please stand.
We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. Here I share your love. Help me bear your joy to know. Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.